Scanning a QR code, or indeed any kind of visual code like a barcode, can be done through Apple's AV Foundation framework. However, it does not integrate into SwiftUI very smoothly, to say the least. And so, to save a whole world of pain, I've gone ahead and made a QR code scanning framework you can use nice and easily using a Swift package we can bring right into Xcode. My package is called Code Scanner, and it's available under a license called the MIT license, which allows you to read the source code, modify the source code, distribute the source code commercially or non-commercially. It's very, very open for everyone to use. To give it a try, go to Xcode, then choose File, and choose Add Packages. Now this step is notoriously uh, creative. Let's call it <laughs> finickety, flaky. Um, it often doesn't work. So don't be upset if it has problems on your computer. It'll be fine, we'll get there eventually. Uh, what you want to do is um, go ahead and select the search or enter package URL box up here and enter https colon slash slash github.com slash two straws slash code scanner. In theory, you will see code scanner appear here in the list of results. And we aren't seeing that. Even if you press enter, you aren't seeing it. Um, for whatever reason, I found the way to make this thing actually work correctly is to type it in, command X the whole thing to your clipboard, and then exit the screen, and then go back to file, add packages, and just paste it on in here. And then it works correctly. I don't know. It, it, Xcode. Anyway, um, you'll see a bunch of options here. Just leave it alone. Up to next major version is fine, which means you'll get all the uh, bug fixes, but no breaking changes. And leave add to project hot prospects enabled. Um, then go ahead and choose add pro package here. Uh, then uh, add package again, it's fine. And this will give us a code scanner view we can use to uh, present a scanning view for QR codes. And it does so in a, in a way you can just present it in a, in, a, in a sheet in SwiftUI and be given back the result. It's a really clean, isolated way of working. And I know I keep repeating myself here, but I hope you can see a repeating theme again and again and again. The best way to write SwiftUI code is to isolate functionality in discrete methods and wrappers. So all you expose to your SwiftUI layouts is just clear and unambiguous. All the AV foundation, all the UI image saving stuff, da -da -da -da, whatever it is, get it somewhere else, isolate it neatly, and then keep a nice clean wrapper shown to SwiftUI. Now, we already have a scan button in our prospect view. It is just temporary right now, this one here, for doing uh, test data. I'm gonna use this to trigger QR code scanning, and so we're gonna start with a new state property up here to track whether we are currently showing the scanner or not. So we'll say at state private var is showing scanner is false. Now earlier we added some test functionality to our scan button, like I said, to have this scan thing down here. Um, we don't need that anymore, right? It's just test data. We want to actually have real scanning data. So go ahead and delete the button's current action and instead say is showing scanner is true. That's our uh, state we care about, show the scanner now. Now when it comes to handling the result of our scanning, I've made this QR, uh, code scanner package here do literally all the work of figuring out what the QR code is, how to send it back and more. So all we have to do is catch a result. I found some code, it's a QR code with a value da -da -da -da, and handle it somehow. Now when our code scanner view finds a code, it'll call a completion code closure with a result instance, either containing details about the code that was found or an error. Perhaps the camera wasn't available because it isn't functional or turned off, or whatever, or the camera um, wasn't able to scan codes, whatever it is. Uh, regardless of what code or error comes back, we're just gonna dismiss the view and then add some more work later on to do more code. So, step one, at the top of our prospects view, we want to add import code scanner. That brings in the module I wrote to handle scanning. And then we'll add a new method down in our view that handles the result of a scan. This will be called func handle scan. The result is, and the result has, again, two types, success and failure. First one is called a scan result. 
Second one's called a scan error. So we'll get one of those two coming back. No matter what we'll do, is showing scanner is false, and then you know more code to come here. Now, before we show the scanner and handle its result, it's really important we ask the user for permission to use the camera. And if you haven't done this before, it's not too hard to do. Go ahead and select your project, the navigator, choose your target, then look in the info box over here. And there's a bunch of options for handling the way your program works. And this one is gonna be the privacy. Can we use the camera or not? And so what we wanna do is just right click an existing key, choose add row, and then scroll way, way down to privacy here. And you'll see privacy camera usage description. Choose that one there. And the box next to it, we're gonna say, we need to scan QR codes. Now remember, uh, iOS delays these alerts. Hey, I, user, do you want to be able to allow this app to scan QR codes or not? It delays that until we request the camera permission, which is great. because they've got to press the scan QR code button and it'll say, hey, we've got to scan QR codes, we've got to have the camera. So it won't be a surprise to them they're being asked to scan the camera, or scan the camera because they've pressed the button. Anyway, at this point, we're now ready to scan QR codes. Now, we already have this is showing scanner thing here that determines whether a, a, a sheet's being shown or not. So we can now bind that to a sheet modifier to present our scanner UI. Now, uh, like I said, there's a code scanner view already made for us down the sources for code scanner. You'll see it if you dig around in here. There we are, this one here. And this takes three parameters to create. You can provide more if you want to. It's very customizable. You can look in the GitHub README. Um, it's right here if you want to see the full power of what it can do. Uh, but for here, there's only a handful we care about. Uh, one is an array of the types we want to scan. You might say, I want to scan just QR codes like we have here, but maybe QR codes and barcodes or all other kinds of codes. And there's stacks and stacks supported by AV Foundation. In our case, we'll just use array with QR by itself. Um, we're also going to pass in a string for simulated data. Now, Xcode Simulator doesn't actually support scanning QR codes uh, with a camera. You can't use the camera in Simulator. And so um, we're going to handle this little replacement UI, effectively. It's done for us by the scanning package. It'll say, uh, sorry, you're in the Simulator. Do you want to load from the gallery or do you want to select your predetermined data? In this case, we'll just pass in default values, just test it all works correctly, simulating what a camera scan would have looked like on a virtual device. But then also we've got to pass in a completion closure, which will be, uh, in our case, this handle scan function. I have finished scanning, here's my result, here's my scan error, one of the two. And so, uh, below our current toolbar here, we're gonna add our sheet. We'll say there's a sheet here, is presented, presented even, come on Hudson, presented, dollar is showing scanner. We'll make our code scanner view. And again, this thing takes a variety of options. Look at them all, wow, there's many, many, many. Um, in our instance though, we only care a handful. We're gonna pass in code types, which will be our array of just QR by itself. Only care about QR codes. We'll pass in some simulated data this will be a string we expect to be given back as our scanned code. We'll say it's Paul Hudson, Hudson, with a line break, remember, for the email address, then paul at hackingwithswift.com. That's the same thing we had before when we hard-coded our action to present an input person here. So some sample data. And then the completion, when I've got a result coming back, will be handle scan, like that to call handle scan when the value comes back. And that's enough to get most of the screen actually working here, um, but there really is one last step, which is when we have our scan result here, what do we want to do? I've got to replace that comment. When a scan has finished successfully or badly, what are we gonna to do to process what was found? Now, if you recall the QR code we're making are uh, the text, a person's name, then a line break, then a person's email address. And so if our scanning result comes back successfully, it's worked, we got a code scanned, we can pull apart the code string into those two parts and use them to make a prospect object out of it. 
If the scanning fail, we'll just print an error. That's fine, of course, you're welcome to show a more interesting UI if you want to. So down here with more code to come, we're gonna say, let's switch on the result we got back. Here. Now remember the slightly curious syntax here. We're gonna say, if it's a successful case, get the result out from inside, and now our details are going to be the results string using components separated by a line break like that. Now the reason result has a string rather than being the string itself is because you can actually read, uh, if you look at the type here, it'll tell you am I a QR code or a barcode. In our case, we don't actually care, but many other folks do care. In our case, we don't. So let's read the string out directly. So we've now got name, line break, email address, but we might not. It could have been a different scan entire. Could have scanned, you know, something in a random shop, for example. Um, so we're going to say uh, guard details dot count is equal to two. Else return. Make sure we have two pieces of data here. Otherwise, refuse to continue. If we're still here, make a prospect. Set their name to be details zero, and their email address to be details one. And now prospects.people.append here that person. So add them to our list of prospects. On the other hand, if it failed, case.failure with let error, we'll just print out scanning failed with the error.localized uh, description. Whatever went wrong there. I should be happy. So go ahead and run the code now on a real device you can so you can see scanning actually work or on the simulator works well too. Uh, or being well, if you are on a simulator, you should see the uh, simulated UI uh, sort of doing test data and similar. So hopefully it'll load super fast. There we go. I'll press the scan button. Here is my virtual simulator thing here. We can tap anywhere here to select some simulated data or select a custom image, a previous QR code you've made in your image library if you want to. In our case, I'll just select this area here to get back the test data we inserted, my name and my email address. Um, if you're using a real device, you should also see the, uh, the warning, do you want to let this uh, app use your camera? Um, if you grant that, you'll see a full-on scanner. You can go ahead and scan a QR code if you want to. Um, the best way of doing it is to launch the app on a device and then also the simulator, go to the me tab on the simulator, make your QR code and then scan with your actual device. That would work well because your phone would scan the simulator if that makes sense. It's a way to handle two devices. Anyway, we now have QR code generation and QR code scanning.